Before we start the RBD Lab workflow, we have to ensure that the meshes are manifold. The way we do it is by using a 3D print add-on that comes with Blender. When we go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, and then type 3D Print, here's the 3D Print toolbox. So once we enable, we have it on the end panel. Now let's select the outer wall and then check all. Here we can see that there are 112 non-manifold edges. We get into edit mode and we select the non-manifold edges. So these are the non-manifold edges. So we can do a simple cleanup. And here we go. Without significant change to the mesh, the add-on makes the mesh manifold. So now there are no non-manifold edges. Perfect. This is very important uh, when we want to fracture a mesh. And similarly, we can check for the floors and the columns. Now let's get into the RBD lab. Now let's start with scattering. For the outer wall, let's choose organic scatter and let's add organic scatter. Here we can see that uh, few icospheres have been added to the outer wall where the particles are going to be scattered. Let's reduce the count to one as we would like to concentrate all the fractures on one corner of the building. And in top view, I would like it to be right here. Let's increase the size of the icosphere to something like 12 or let's say 15. Accept. And let's increase the child particles to 30,000. And let's move the icosphere to the corner that I'm interested in. There we go. Now let's choose the outer wall again, which is this mesh, and then get to fracture. And we'll use own particles and child particles and max chunks. Let's increase them to 2000. And then fracture. There we go. As we can see, there are more number of fractures right here in this corner of the building. And there are very few on the rest of the building. Perfect. Now, as we can see, the insides are pretty flat for these chunks. So let's give them some more detail by going to add extra details. And there are two options. One is remesh and the other one is subdivision. Let's first see the subdivision. Now, let's increase the subdivisions. And as we are increasing the number of subdivisions, we can see that the detail is increasing. Let's increase the subdivisions to four. And as we can see, here are the inner details. And now, if there are a few chunks which are bad, we can actually select these chunks. And here, once the pre selection is checked, we can say select bad chunks. And the RBD lab add on actually selects this bad chunk. And then we'll do an auto fix. And there we go. This has fixed the problem. When we look at the chunk, there we go. We can see the inner details much more clearly. Looks good. Let's apply. Now, once we apply the high details in the viewport, we'll be working with the low resolution version because that makes the viewport performance much faster. Now, once we have the outer wall fractured, let's take a look at the mesh visualization options that we have. Here, we can flip the viewport to low or high resolution. And if we flip to high resolution version, we can see that we can see high resolution details. And in order to improve the viewport performance, if we have thousands of chunks, we can actually use this bounding box option where all of these chunks 
appear as bounding boxes. So this improves the viewport performance. And we can switch on the pretty shading. Uh, let's get into view and let's change the clip start to point 0.1. Perfect. So here we can see the viewport lighting as well. And moving further, we have an option called Explode Visualization. And here we can hit on Start Explode. And as we increase this amount, we can see the explode visualization of all these chunks. And we can switch on or off the colorize option to see clearly. So this is how the chunks are present. Perfect. Let's decrease the amount back to zero. And let's end the explode. And let's turn off the pretty shading. So this is an overview of the mesh visualization options. And let's get back to the low resolution on the viewport. And if there are high resolutions present, then the render always takes the high resolution. All right. Now let's fracture the floors as well. Under RBD lab collection, under outer walls low, let's hide it so we can see the floors better. And let's select all these floors and let's select standard scatter and let's add standard scatter. And let's increase the density to something like 200 and then accept. And here we can optionally change the max chunks to 200, but since we only have own particles and not any child particles, we can leave the max chunks at 2000 although the, we will only get 200 chunks for each floor. And then here, as each floor is a separate mesh, if we just fracture like this, each floor is going to generate a separate target collection. Instead of that, we would like all these floors to generate a single target collection. So we're going to check on the single output, and then we're going to give it an output name saying floors underscore TC. TC is just for target collection, something that I use. And let's hit fracture. There we go. Let's hide the wall. And here are the floors. And let's add extra detail to the floors as well. And under subdivision, we're going to add four subdivisions. And if you would like to work with the noise patterns, we can change the parameters here. And as we can see, there are a few bad chunks. So let's select these bad chunks. And there are a few here. Perfect. And under in pre selection, let's say select bad chunks. So RBD lab detected that these are the bad chunks, and we can say auto fix. And if you are working with the complex building model and there are thousands of chunks, then what I typically do is instead of manually looking for these things, I switch off the in pre selection. And then I'm going to select all of the chunks in the target collection and then select bad chunks but that's going to take a lot of time and computation resources all right sounds good let's uh, apply there we go perfect let's work on the columns so under rbd lab let's hide the floors and here are all the columns so we'll select all the columns and then let's add a standard scatter and we're just going to work with the lower density of 20 and then accept and then 
we don't need the child particles because we don't have any child particles. And then here we can optionally choose to change the max chunks or leave it as it is. Here I'm just choosing to change it to 20. And then single output will say columns underscore TC. And then fracture. There we go. Now for this one, let's apply the fracture as the columns are too small to see any extra details even if we add them from this viewing distance. So let's apply fracture. There we go. So this is the fractured building. Let's save the file. In the next part, let's take a look at the physics and the actuators module.